Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? I'm so excited. Hi, guys. It's going to be such Listen, a good show. I cannot wait. Julie is super hyped over there. That's what I'm talking about, Julie. <laughs> we must, yeah, so we, we today we got a super special guest today that's going to have his talents on full display. And, uh, you know, just to let you guys know, Chief Chat is where the magic happens. So I, I'm throwing out my little magical puns and all this other stuff but uh, without further ado julie please introduce today's guest today's guest brings joy to others through the miracle of magic he was the first magician to win america's got talent and now he wows the crowds at the link in las vegas with magic reinvented nightly let's hear it for matt franco hey hello hello how you doing Hey, what's yeah, going on, Matt? How, how's everything going? Everything's going really well. Thanks for asking. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, we appreciate you for joining us on the show today. Uh, can you let us know how has Las Vegas been treating you? You know, it's been great. It's great to be doing sh live shows again. It's crazy because when I came to Las Vegas uh, now six years ago, I didn't know if I was going to be here performing for six days or six months. And here I am six years later uh, at the Matt Franco Theater and... The exciting part is we've just signed on for five more years. So it really is just uh, an incredible opportunity for me to be able to share what I love to do on a nightly basis. So I'm so thankful for it. That is terrific, Matt. And as you said, you're back performing for live audiences during Magic Reinvented Nightly at The Link in Vegas. So tell us, what was the pandemic like for you? And what did you do to stay connected with your fans when you weren't able to perform those live, live shows? Yeah, it was an incredible break. We had 412 days off. I mean, who's counting? But it was 412 <laughs> days of not being able to do what really is uh, what I consider a, a, a part of me, performing and being able to share smiles with people. It's what I do. It's what I love. So to be away from that was, was difficult. Uh, it was a weird year and a half for all of us, right? But um, I tried to kind of give back by immediately pivoting to – performing virtually. So I started doing uh, free appearances and Q&As and performances on uh, Facebook and uh, posting regularly on Instagram so I could still share with my magic, uh, share my magic with people in a way that allows us to stay connected. Excellent. Um, so glad that you were able to still stay connected during, you know, during those 412 days. <laughs> Um, so Matt, you're a self-taught magician and uh, you've learned the art at a young age. So tell us about growing up in Ro Rhode Island and then what drew you to magic? I saw magic on TV for the first time. I was about four years old. So I, my memory of it is pretty unclear other than that there were multiple magicians performing on a single show or special. And I just knew right away, okay, I, I, I want to do that. So my parents got me a couple of little magic toy tricks. Uh, next thing you know, I was doing them for show and tell in, in kindergarten, and I've, I've loved it ever since. I just sort of never looked back. Didn't have a lot of magicians that I knew at that time in growing up in Rhode Island or even magic shops. It wasn't until I was probably seven or eight years old when I found out there was a magic shop in Boston. And my mom and my uncle, actually, uh, we went on a bus to Boston so that I could go to this magic shop. And it was like, that was Disney World for me. I said, I passed on Disney World. I was like, no, no, take me to Vegas. I, I literally grew up with a picture of Vegas on my wall. So the oh, whole wow. sort of thing is full circle for me. It really is surreal. So so did you have like the, the top hat and the cape too uh, as your as your whole get up uh, at four years old or? Yeah, there are, there are photos to prove that. Yes, <laughs> I, I said that though, right? As, as I started getting a little older, 12, 13, that was not like cool anymore, right? So I started getting more influenced by things I was seeing in regular, you know, more mainstream pop culture and music and started sort of 
letting those things influence how I perform for people. Cause I wanted magic to be modern. I wanted magic to be kind of cool and hip. And, uh, I, I don't know that, uh, a teenager can necessarily do that in their awkward stages, which is what I was in, but I tried my best. Awesome. Awesome. And so kind of, I, I see some similarities in, in our life. Uh, cause, uh, my grandmother was a huge supporter of me, uh, growing up and, and, uh, she, you know, I, I owe all the great things in life, uh, that I've been able to accomplish to her. So, uh, but I see that your grandmother was also super supportive of you. So can you talk to us about that support and what it meant to you when you were developing your talents? Yeah, my grandma's 93 and still with us in uh, Cranston, Rhode Island. And uh, my parents, mom and dad, were both very uh, supportive of my, my magic habit or obsession. But both are working. So but grandma was available to uh, watch me as I'm practicing magic and failing and saying, OK, let me try it again. I'd make one small mistake and say, oh, I got to go all the way back to the beginning. And we sat for hours, days, and years uh, doing that. And she would actually, this was back in the time uh, where, where we didn't have, the, the internet wasn't a thing. And if you wanted to know what was on TV, you actually received a, a TV guide TV in, your, guide, in yeah. your newspaper. She would go through every line of it every week, uh, hoping to see the word magic. And anytime there would be some sort of magic special or something on, she would call me and tell me about it. and. and on VHS tapes for me on her VCR, and then eventually I learned how to do that. And then we would watch those videotapes over and over and over of magicians on television and put them in slow motion and try to figure out what they were doing. So she was a huge supporter. Um, I'm so thankful she's still with us now when I'm at an age where I can really uh, appreciate it. And I, I pay tribute to her every single night in my show on stage in Las Vegas. And you're showing your age with that TV guide reference. I know, 33. <laughs> <laughs> I still so feel Matt, like a kid. That counts for anything. Well, you you look awfully. Yeah, you you look like you're 23, not 33. So I was a little surprised by that you're TV the guide reference as well. <laughs> I know, I really am. <laughs> we'll talk later about how much money you owe me for that comment after the show. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> So when did you realize that you could make a career out of doing something that you loved so much? I was at such a young age. I didn't even know that it was sort of a lofty or a crazy dream to just assume I was going to have a career in show business. To me, that just seemed like it was what I saw, you know, Lance Burton doing on television or Penn and Teller. So I thought, oh, I, uh, that's what I'm going to do. And, and my parents never discouraged me saying that that was crazy. So I always assumed that it was sort of a, much more realistic dream than I now know that it actually is. Um, as I started to get a little older, high school and college, I started to think, oh, well, is this really doable? So I started to, I was performing at such a young age and I never stopped, but it wasn't until I got a little older that the, um, in show business, business is the, the bigger word. And then I started to realize as I got older, you need to have that part in gear as well if you want to actually uh, make a, a real go at it. So I'm thankful that I was able to kind of uh, realize that and figure that out. But it was uh, probably before I even knew what a job was, I, I figured magic would be my job. Um, but it's always been my hobby to this day. I can wake up and sit anywhere in my house. It could be at my kitchen counter or in my office and I can pick up a, a deck of cards and start practicing. And without even realizing it, seven hours will go by. It's It really is my passion and my love. And um, it, it's interesting that it intertwines with what I do. It's just, uh, it's amazing. I love it. Wow, I'm in awe that you just could practice for seven hours and not realize that. <laughs> I forget to eat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh okay that... I, forget to eat. I forget to eat sometimes too when i'm working that happens it's a real thing <laughs> I, I never forget to eat you guys never that's ever forget to eat. <laughs> that's, not a thing for me. That, that's my problem that i need to forget to eat yeah i, I try not to <laughs> get bored because i'll eat out of boredom so stay busy for sure and you have been busy. So we, we saw you on this year's season finale of America's Got Talent with 2021 winner and fellow magician Dustin Tavella. So what led you to auditioning for America's Got Talent? And that was back in 2014. 
I think part of why America's Got Talent, I think part of it was the allure of, of television. I had never done TV before. I think at that time, uh, part of it was the allure of doing something that, that pushed the envelope and scared me a little bit. It felt like the next logical step. And then the other side of it was, was more logical, was trying to get footage of myself performing on TV because I knew that could lead to, to better gigs. At that time, I was touring all over the country, performing on college campuses, which was amazing. But I knew to book more gigs, uh, TV credit and also footage of me doing that would, would help. So I was hoping to just get even just one second of footage of me performing on the show so I could say, as seen on America's Got Talent, as seen on NBC, I thought, wow, that would be a huge deal, even if it's just a, a flash. Um, and then next thing you know, I, I, I audition, and Howard Stern and Heidi Klum, Howie Mandel, Mel B, they're all, Nick Cannon is standing ovation from not only them, but uh, 5,000 people at the Dolby Theater in Los Angeles, which I had never even been to before. Uh, so, and I get voted through, and next thing I know, I got voted through the next round. And then it goes to live television, and people are voting from home, and I'm getting voted through week after week. And it started to just become this real thing of like, oh my God, I got it. Now I have to try to make it to the next round. It was no longer about getting one little clip anymore. Now it was about advancing to the next level, but it still never became about winning. I was still just thinking, I got to make, make it to next week. And then it wasn't until I was on stage in the finals, in the finale with one other act. And I started to think, oh my gosh, is there actually a 50-50 chance this could happen now? And uh, sure enough, the, the rest is history. But um, uh, just a, an incredible moment that I'll never forget, an epiphany for sure. Man, that's that's awesome, awesome. So you you know we're going to ask, like we, we got to see some of this this magic, uh, you know, performance. Just, you know, this is – this is a little sample of what, what you, you'll get in Vegas, but uh, we would love to uh, see you uh, share a magic moment with us right now. Yeah, you know, I, I like to collect sort of magical things. I'm going to hold this up. I'm not sure if, uh, if you all can see and have any idea what this is. I, I'm, I'm just going to hold it up and you can describe to our listeners. What do you think this is? Any guesses, by the way? It, look, it looks like a, a deck of cards the whole, that holds a deck of cards or... That's a like, really great guess. It is a box, but you'll notice it's box. all white. It's blank, in other words. This is what they look like before they're printed. And magic always kind of stays one step ahead of technology because how cool would it be if you could actually do this? Watch. Don't blink. Oh. Now, with just a snap, it prints. And it's crazy because it's just the outside of the box. You see, the inside, of course, stays blank. You can see that, right? Yep. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, check it out. If I fold up the box... And I just give a little bit of a snap. I can actually get the cards to appear inside the box. What just happened? The cards appeared inside the box. <laughs> but now here's the thing. You can go from num nothing to something, but check it out. These are actually blank as well. On both sides, mm. every single card, just blank cards. But you can still do some pretty amazing magic with these. For example, if I take one card and I place it on the bottom, if I snap, I can make it appear on the top. Oh, you don't look impressed. <laughs> it's a blank card. <laughs> my mouth is still hey, my mouth is still open though. I, I can tell you that. <laughs> I, I will I will show you a little something. If I wanted to print a card, oh. you can do that. Now it looks like that, but actually that's an illusion because you can see that nine of hearts there. But all I have to do is just wave the hand like this, and you'll see it goes back to blank. Now, even though they're blank, you can do some amazing magic with these. Let's say you're playing a game of cards and in your poker hand, you have maybe a three and maybe an ace and maybe a king and maybe a two. And how about a five? The crazy thing is that's an illusion too because I don't actually have any of those cards. Now, if I did, if I did have those cards, they would probably look something like this. Now, can I be honest with you? This is a trick card because it's just the back. There's nothing on the other side. If I want the other side to appear, I snap, and you can make the other side, oh, sometimes it doesn't appear over here. Sometimes it goes all the way over here. So now you have a face without a back, and a back without a face, it doesn't really make much sense. So let me tell you what, let's just start again. Here's what they look like before they leave the factory. Here's what they look like after they've been printed. But my friends, 
not just one card, but every card in the entire deck, but not oh, just no. the faces, but also no way. the backs, yes mm -hmm. way. But if there's one thing I want you to remember from this whole thing, mm -hmm. is that this is what the cards look like before they leave the factory. So if anybody asks you how that's done, just tell them you have no idea. <laughs> oh my gosh, I loved it. Oh my goodness. I loved it. That was so great, Matt. Oh Thank my you gosh. So much. <laughs> I like that was worth waking up for this morning. That was so terrific. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> and so, Matt, you performed on uh, TV for audiences at home, and then you also you know do your Las Vegas show for a live audience. So, how do you alter your approach from um, TV versus a live audience? What changes magic for you? Is, I, I think magic is best experienced live and in person. There's some sort of a, immediacy to that that makes it great. The live element um, really is, is a huge part for me of what, what makes it special. Now, having said that, especially over this past year, we've learned we can do magic virtually uh, for many years. People have been experiencing magic on television. I think um, in performing on TV, I like to keep things visual, kind of like what you just saw. There's lots of eye candy happening all the time. So basically you take advantage of what the medium offers, right? So uh, for television, I can perform directly for the camera and make magical things happen that are visual and eye popping. Uh, when it comes to performing magic live, you take advantage of those things that you can do in person that can't be experienced through television. I. Uh, it's much more tactile, right? I can have you physically be part of something. My type of magic is very interactive. So I'm constantly bringing people up on stage to be part of the experience. It's not just a type of show where people are kind of sitting and watching. It's more of an immersive experience. And I think that's the big difference with, with Magic Live is that you really become part of it. It's happening in your mind, in your, in your hands. And physically there are things, I, I do things where I, shoot things over the audience and they rain down onto the audience. I borrow items from audience members that they care about deeply, like cell phones, for example. I take these away from people and do magical things with them and make them show up and appear in places they least expect it. So the difference is that sort of time and that, that physical experience. And that simply can't be, can't be duplicated um, through the medium of television or even like this. And one of our bosses saw you perform uh, live this summer and he uh, you actually performed a trick with him and he raved about it and said it was absolutely fantastic and had so much fun. So clearly you're doing something right um, if you made him happy. So I don't know. He, he and his family enjoyed it. So oh, no, I'm so happy to hear it. Yeah. And you mentioned right before we came on, it, that's a great example. I borrowed money from him. Cash is king. Took his money, made it disappear. And I'll, I'll, I'll leave it as a wow. surprise as to, to where it turned up, but it was the most impossible location. <laughs> <laughs> That's wow. Awesome. That's impressive. And Matt, you've taught me magic right now. I've had a, my shirt turned into a different shirt. Amazing. <laughs> and, and you know what else is magical? Uh, your, your last name. It, it, Matthew's with one T and my name is Matt with one T. Very, very, we're part of a rare breed. I love that. We are. We you know are. what? I was going to ask you about the one T. What? Why? Why the mat is one T instead of? Well, you, you'd have to ask my parents about that one because I didn't name myself. I'm not sure if it was a mistake <laughs> or what, but because I, I have a brother and his middle name is Matthew with two T's, my older brother. So I'm not sure where the one T came from. I'm like a doormat, you know, just walk all over. <laughs> <laughs> and you're funny too. That's good. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> so Matt, we have the military community watching live with us right now. Um, the floor is yours. What would you like to say to our nation's heroes? Wow, just a, a huge expression of gratitude, a huge thank you, not to, just to those in service, but also the families. There, there's so much uh, dedication and sacrifice involved. So just uh, a huge thank you and expression of gratitude. Uh, can't say it enough. Thank you uh, for, for that. You, you have my support in full for sure. Matt, the military community loves you right back. You're getting a ton of love on our Facebook feed, and I just want to share some of the comments with you live. Jerome says, hi, from Colorado Springs. 
Lynn Velez says, love your magic. Jessica Marie is watching from Spangdalem in Germany. And wow. Alicia Wingate, um, she has like a mind blown emoji. Um, <laughs> those are the Christine best. Christine says, yeah, those are the best. And uh, Sergeant First Class Tari Hill, she has a mind blown emoji showing up too as well. Christine says, so cool. And Connor says, awesome stuff. Um, he wants to know, he has a question for you. He wants sure. to know if magic is, he says, is it a super competitive field to get into? Or do you find uh, other folks in the industry are eager to help others get into the business? Yeah, I find it to be uh, mostly just an amazing community. If I find myself at a magic convention, I feel like I'm sort of with my tribe, if you will. Um, uh, to do magic professionally, of course, every market can be competitive. I think there's always room for someone who's great at what they do. Uh, I, I never think of it as a of a competition personally. You know, a lot of times people think of that because Houdini, one of the most famous magicians of all time, if not the most, um, was always about sort of being the greatest, being the best, right? And that's not something we see with stand-up comedians or musicians, most of them aren't claiming to be that, right? Um, and I, I kind of subscribe more to that school of thought, uh, that we can all sort of uh, do different things and great things and, and be unique. And to me, there's only one Matt Franco. There's only one whoever you are as a performer, whether you're a singer, comedian, or magician. So as long as you're bringing your own point of view to your artistry, um, I think that's fantastic, and I think uh, there's really no contest at all because there's only one of you as well. So that's the way that I view it, but everyone has their own perspective. Oh, I love that answer. That's a great question, Connor, and that's, look at you. You're the magician with a kind heart. I love it. I know. And Connor, Connor, that means you, you got a chance in magic if that's where you were trying to go, Connor. So, <laughs> Having said that, there are plenty of magic competitions. If you want to compete, go for it. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Matt, uh, we know Magic Reinvite, Reinvented Nightly uh, keeps you super busy. So uh, can you tell us what else is on the horizon for you? Well, I, uh, I actually recently over the pandemic started a podcast called Mind Over Magic which people can find on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find Mind Over Magic. And it's it's great not just for uh, – my co-host is a mentalist who was also on America's Got Talent. Eric Diddleman was the first mentalist to appear on the show. And we chat about what's going on in our lives, in the life of show business. He's over in New York. I'm in Vegas. So we have a catch-up each week, talk about what's going on in, in America's Got Talent, in show business in general, going on in our shows. Um, we give a little insight of behind the scenes of whatever projects we're working on. We get a little bit in depth into magic theory, but uh, not too much to the point where uh, those who just want to listen to something uh, light and fun can enjoy it as well. So it's funny you say a mentalist because we were uh, doing a dry run yesterday and I was like, what the what is a mentalist? I've, I don't think I've heard that term. I think we have a mentalist coming up on the show uh, in, in a few weeks. And so we uh, do they, they, have, have a mentalist next week. And I believe you, you might know him. His name is David McGee. Um, so he's our he's our guest next week. So awesome. Now, I'm not familiar with David, but, um, you know, he probably already knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Man, <laughs> ah, OK, <laughs> tip your bartenders, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> too funny. So Matt, before we say goodbye, can you remind us again where we can go to learn more about you and your show, Magic Reinvented Nightly? I know you mentioned your podcast, you called it Mind Over Magic, which is available on uh, wherever people get their podcasts. But what about social channels? Where can we go to find you and, and hear about your show? Well, this is a pretty easy one to remember. It's at Matt Franco on uh, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, and all that good stuff. Oh, not, not Matt not Franco, Matt. Got a little little at Matt Franco magic on the screen. If you just cross out the magic, it'd be correct. There you go. Boom. It disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it used to be, it used to be at Matt Franco magic. So that's where you pull that from, but I've since changed it. And we've got just the at Matt Franco now, which is fun. Um, MattFranco.com. Always Matt with one T, uh, M-A-T. And that's where you can find what's going on. Um, 
tickets to my show in Las Vegas. You can also get those, of course, at Ticketmaster.com. We're at the Link Hotel and Experience at the Matt Franco Theater, and we're performing uh, many shows each week. It is a one-of-a-kind immersive experience that you really just can't get anywhere else. It is unlike any other, not just magic show, but it really is unlike any other show that you can experience. I got to be honest, not just in Vegas, but anywhere in the world. We've really put together something unique and special. Um, and that's why I think we've been able to to do it for uh, almost 2,000 performances now in Las Vegas. So I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully thousands more. So hope to see you at a show sometime. We need to go to Nellis, Chief and Leah. Don't yes, we need we need a, we need a show, we need to go to Nellis, yeah. do a site visit, right, and right. Uh, pop up on Matt Franco doing the show. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I visited the base there as well, and it was uh, we did sort of a, a meet and greet, and it was such an amazing time. Awesome. So, Matt, I was trolling your Chat IG. Live. I'm not gonna lie. Was that say that again, Leah? Chief Chat Live. Oh yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So I, I was trolling your IG uh, b before the interview, and uh, I saw that there was like a correlation between the cards and and like the seasons and the and the years or whatever. And I thought that was super fascinating. I don't know if you don't mind kind of sharing that with us, or yeah, yeah, I can explain it to you. So in every deck of cards, uh, there are four suits which represent the four seasons. Most people don't don't think of that, right? Hearts, clubs, spades, and diamonds. Um, too hot, too cold. There are 13 cards in a suit, which represent uh, the 13 phases of the moon. We have um, 52 cards in the deck, 52 weeks in a year. And if you add up all the spots on the cards, they equal um, 364 plus the joker, 365, the amount of days in a year. Now there is controversy, however, whether or not that was intended in playing cards or whether or not it's connections that our brain made afterwards, sort of relating it to all those things. Um, but it is sort of interesting hidden meaning within a deck of cards and you can sort of decide for yourself uh, whether or not you think it was intended or our human brain sort of made those connections later on. Man, see the co the conspiracy theory in me just is is lighting up right now, so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So um, oh, for everyone cool. watching or listening uh, I, or everyone watching right now, please, you can uh, find this episode on YouTube and on Spotify. But if you're on Spotify, it, it, it probably hoove of you to, to go to YouTube so you can actually see the performance. But he did an excellent job of explaining it on Spotify. <laughs> so so thank you, Matt, for doing that. It's been oh, a, such absolutely. a fun episode. We appreciate you, brother. Absolutely. Oh, my absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I hope to see you again sometime. We'll do it live when you're in Vegas, and I'll show you some magic in person, even, right? And on stage. Yeah. So, so I won't, I don't know if I'm going to give you a hundred dollars like Judd. I got like a dollar though. That I that if it goes anywhere, then I can. I can be with, Judd, Judd's got a different kind of money. So, uh. <laughs> what if I could turn it into a hundred? Oh well, yeah. Let, let's do that then. I'll, I'll give you a quarter. Be okay if you like took 15 pounds off of me i'd be okay with that <laughs> <laughs> leah hey, that's we're, like we're come, a whole new level yeah well we're coming to vegas with all of our requests on what, what we need you to you know do magically for us so i could take requests why not let's do it i related magic to music before let's go absolutely but uh no thank thank you so much for uh joining us today like i said we we're gonna look for you next time we're in vegas the exchange absolutely supports you, and we thank you for uh, sharing a little bit of your time. Uh, and if you don't mind, staying on a little bit after the live, uh, I, just to get some from you. But uh, just thank you again on air. Appreciate oh, you. Oh, absolutely. Likewise, thank you so much. I appreciate y'all having me on today. Awesome, awesome. Well, Chief Chat out, you guys. Have a good one. <laughs>